No tan is a term that refers to the Japanese idea of balanced light and dark areas in a composition. One of the most familiar symbols illustrating this concept is the circular yin-yang from the Eastern philosophy. No tan is the idea that the elements of dark and light are equally important and need each other to exist. You can't have negative space without positive space and vice versa. In this project, you're gonna be creating a collagraph print made from a foam sheet and you're going to need a large piece of cardboard as your printing plate. You're also going to need something to write on your foam with and you will need some glue. It could be Elmer's glue, hot glue, anything that will make it stick really well. So I'm going to begin by drawing a design that comes out of each side of this rectangle. You could start with a rectangle or a square. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna create two separate line designs that come out of the same side. And I'm gonna do this for each side. Right now, I'm just using organic squiggly lines. I'm not trying to draw anything in particular. I'm just simply drawing a design. You wanna make sure that none of your lines touch one another. All the lines need to be separate. And I would suggest not drawing any two lines super close to each other. So once you've come up with your design, you're gonna begin cutting everything out. Do your best to cut right on the line. And also do not draw any lines that come out of the corner. Make sure that your lines come out of the side. So any black line should not touch the corner of the rectangle or square that you begin with. I'm gonna make sure that as I'm cutting, I'm not cutting too far. When you're cutting into foam, it can be a little bit tricky because you might end up cutting a little bit too far and chopping off a piece that you did not intend to. So be careful, rotate your scissors, rotate the foam, do whatever you need to do to make sure that you are cutting right on the line that you drew. Nobody's gonna see these lines, so if you miss it by a little bit, that is okay, but you wanna make sure that you're cutting out the intended design. After you finish cutting everything out, it is wise to lay everything down face up so that you can see the black lines from my Sharpie. And you're gonna piece everything together like a puzzle. And when you do that, you're setting yourself up for success to make sure that you lay everything down in the correct place. So as you can see, I'm piecing everything together and um, once you have everything in the correct place, you can kind of spread everything out. So I'm gonna begin by gluing down my big middle piece. I wanna center this. I wanna make sure that it's in the middle of the composition and I wanna make sure that any pieces that I glue down after this do not leave the space of the composition. So I don't want anything to go beyond my printing plate. I want all the foam pieces to touch my or stay on my printing plate. Nothing should be hanging off. So when I get ready to glue down my next piece, I'm gonna put my large piece in to fit it like a puzzle, and then I'm gonna flip it open like a book. So I'm doing this with all four sides right now so that you can see what that will look like. I wanna make sure that the corners touch the corners from the center piece. So as you can see, once I flip these, I no longer see the black lines. That's important. Now in order for the composition to look complete, it's very, very important that those corners are touching. So each time I glue a piece down, there shouldn't be any space in between one foam piece and another. There should always be a tiny little corner touching another piece and it's only the corners that touch. No two sides should line up and touch one another. Now I'm getting ready to glue my last pieces. So again, I'm fitting them in like a puzzle into the piece that they were a part of. 
and then I flip them open like a book. So now that I'm flipping them open kind of the reverse way, I'm gonna see the black lines again. So when I glue my big middle piece down, it's face up so I can see the black lines. When I glue the next four big pieces down, they're flipped open like a book from the middle piece, so they're upside down so I don't see the black lines. The last four little pieces are flipped open like a book from the big pieces, so they're face up so I do see the black lines. Now I'm gonna take my fingers and just trace along each design to make sure that the positive space where the foam is and the negative space where just the cardboard is match up like a mirror image. They should line up symmetrically. So each small design and each large design coming out of each side should look symmetrical. Once your glue is dry, you're ready to start printing. So you can use acrylic or tempera paint, whatever you have at home, whatever color you have at home is fine. You're gonna use your brayer to roll the paint on evenly. You wanna make sure that you are covering every surface of the foam. Don't leave any of that foam exposed. Go back and forth, so go side to side and up and down until that paint is nice and smooth and flat. And then when you're ready, lay your paper face down on the foam and rub the back of your paper. You wanna make sure that that paint really attaches to the paper, so make sure you rub thoroughly and you pull the print and voila. Now you might also wanna pull a ghost print, which I'm about to do, um, which is where you pull any excess paint off of the printing plate. So if I wanna switch colors, I wanna get the rest of that pink paint off of the printing plate, and then I can apply some more paint of my desired color. The ghost print is kind of like scrap paper. Now this print, the paint went on pretty thick and you could see little bumps in the paint on the foam, which is what created those little lines that you just saw in the print. So now I'm gonna kind of flatten that paint out and try and get rid of all those little bumps to create a flatter print with less texture. And I'm printing onto a previously painted background. Again, you wanna make sure you're rubbing the back nice and thoroughly. And you are gonna see a little bit of texture in this print because I'm printing on watercolor paper. I would recommend printing on plain white paper, drawing paper, anything is fine. Um, try to avoid textured paper though, like what I'm using, because you will end up seeing some of that texture in there. So pull as many prints as you like until you end up achieving your desired results. And I hope you have lots of fun creating your Japanese no tan.